Hi again. Walk 9, Plesley Pit, Country Park. Monday the 31st of October 2011, early afternoon. The weather's okay, a little overcast, but dry, and no suggestion that we're going to get a lot of rain. My chores are complete for now, so I'm off strolling. Where to? I've done the Tevisal Plesley Skegby Circular a few times recently, but never gave myself enough time to explore Plesley Pit in a bit more detail. So Plesley Pit it is. Or to be more precise, Plesley Pit Country Park. If we walked from home, we would once again end up with not enough daylight left to explore a little. But five minutes journey to travel, the couple of miles to Plesley by car would leave us with time aplenty. The only drawback with travelling to our start point in the car is that no names insists on barking at everything and everybody that comes within 50 yards of us whilst we travel. Fortunately, it usually only takes him about 5 minutes to settle down and shut up. Peace will then ensue. So, better get ready. Combat style trousers on, lots of pockets to save carrying a bag, camera, check, spare batteries, check, binoculars. Now where did I put them? Ah, there they are. Check. Spring water. Check. Rain jacket. Just in case. Check. Car keys. Check. Doggy bags. Oh yes, can't forget them. Check. No names lead. Check. OK, let's go. Ten minutes later, as opposed to five minutes, stopping to receive a phone call en route and some minor roadworks caused a little delay. So, ten minutes later, I parked the Trekker mobile. That's an old Peugeot 106 to you and me in the car park at Plesley Pit Country Park. I jump out and hit the quick release, in other words lift the hatchback boot lid, and no names is out in a flash, running around dragging his lead along the ground. After locking the car, calling no names to me, and releasing his lead, we're off on foot and paw in a clockwise direction around the park. The going is easy, the main paths around the park are solid, with plenty of width to allow for passing with ease. The sky is still overcast but no rain, Temperature cool, freezing. Wind, quite strong, but not exhaustive. But the wind usually is quite strong up here, and gets stronger as you gain altitude. Well, the first thing I acknowledge is that the whole area has been altered dramatically since I lived in the area 13 years ago. The pit top, then, was nothing more than a mass of spoil heaps and waste ground, with the old pit engine house and old remains rapidly turning to ruin. I remember walking up here years after the pit closure with a sack to rummage for wasted lumps of coal to burn on the fire at home. I have gas central heating now, so no longer need to go to that trouble. Well, the local authorities have been spending a lot of time and effort in recent years working to transform the former colliery site into yet another nature-friendly country park, just like many other former colliery sites in the area. And what a great job they're doing so far. It is quite obvious that this country park is still in infancy, as country parts go. But over time, we'll grow to maturity in the coming years. One of the most inspiring things about Plesley Pit Country Park is the fact that it is still entitled with obvious reference to its former use, rather than giving it an unassuming name not obviously connected with its past, unlike much of the other country parks on former colliery sites. The reason is obvious. The pit engine house, headstocks, winding wheels, chimney, and the odd pit building are still here, obvious for everyone to see. In fact, the remains of this industrial architecture can be seen as a landmark for miles around. On almost all of the former colliery sites in the area, all the pit architecture has been demolished, so hardly any or no trace of their past use remains. Plesley is the obvious exception. Indeed, the former engine room is now a museum, open to the public that remembers the bygone era. This is run and maintained by the Friends of Plesley Pit, a voluntary group set up by local people 16 years ago. Around the park, there's many other minor footpaths that take us away from the main to do more exploration. No names and I only venture along a few of them and stick to the main pathways for the most part. Soon, we find ourselves looking upon local authority workmen and their machinery who are in the process of building a sandbank at one side of the pond in order to attract more wildlife. So let's hope it proves to be successful. The pond itself proves to be a host to several species of waterfowl, including a pair of swans. 
and no names and I spend quite some time around the pond taking photos, videos and watching the water birds at a safe distance from my binoculars. Well I do. No names can't get the hang of looking through binoculars, taking photos or shooting vids and instead delights in running about exploring and repeatedly cocking his leg on almost every inanimate object in sight. Nothing new there then. Well we did meet a few people earlier in our walk and continue to do so, but the whole area seems quiet by comparison to the two country parks closer to home, that is Briley Forest Park and Silverhill Wood. Both are much busier than Plesley. So if you want a more peaceful country park than normal, then Plesley is the one for you. The tranquillity itself is a little infectious, and I want to stop longer, but time is pressing on. So a return to the car via the old pit buildings looks like the best option. The renovation work taking place on the old buildings has been well underway for some time now, and the work, I'm sure, will continue indefinitely, with new improvements being introduced all the time. Some photoshops ensue, and then we must be getting back. I've got tea to cook. Eventually, we return to the Trekmobile, and for the first time ever, as I lift the axe back, no names actually tries to get it himself, but can't quite manage the hide, so a hutch up from me soon sorts him out. Of course, the photographs taken on this walk can be seen on Facebook as usual. And uh, naturally you can read about this on the blog site. So the walk has taken us just two and a half hours of easy going gamble. We will stop off at the pond for a while. I vow to myself that we shall visit again soon and might even take in place with L or whilst we're in the area, if there's enough time. But we'll talk about that at a later date. So thanks for watching, listening, and I shall speak to you again soon. Goodbye.